Where does that bottle go? I have something. Oh, I've seen that one already. That one, that one's empty. So, Miss Drew? Hi. I'm Dr. Harding. And Nurse Ames told me that you might be having some alcohol withdrawal. Oh, oh sure he did. So I'm here to do an assessment. Are you feeling nauseous at all? Yeah. But I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't pick anything up. I, okay. I feel so sick. Okay. Uh, can you hold your hands up for me like this and spread your fingers? Okay. And then can you show me? Are you sweating at all? Oh, I feel so hot. Yeah. Can I see the, your palms? Okay. Yeah, they they feel pretty oh, moist. Yeah. It's so hot in here. Do you it's feel so anxious? Yes, I feel anxious. Oh, I look anxious. You, you silly gal. You do look oh, anxious. Okay. Hurry up, hurry um, up. Okay. So, are you feeling anything like pins and needles? Oh, I'm itchy. You're itching. I'm just or itchy. burning. It's like numbness. No, no, just okay. itchy. And Bugs, how about maybe sound? Sound. Are, are sounds is, harsh? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you hearing anything that isn't in the room right now? What do you put in the room? Does that anything mean? Anything that's schizophrenic or something? No, oh. it's just a standard no. part of the assessment. And how, how about the lights? Are the, oh, the lights, lights are too really, bright? really bright? Can you They're turn really them bright? down? Okay, can we turn down the lights? Thank you. Okay. And how, how about your head? Do you have a headache at all? Yes, I have a headache. And how would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? I don't know. What's 10? I have no idea. 10 is the worst. It's, it's like a band. It really, really hurts. Okay. Okay, and do you know where you are right now? I'm in the hospital. In what city? Uh, 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 San Francisco. Yeah. So, uh, and what's the date today? I don't know. It's April. April. Do you know the no. year? Uh, yeah, 2012. Okay. Okay, and uh, Nurse Ames is going to come in and uh, take your vital please, signs right hurry. now. Yeah. Hi, Ms. Drew. My uh, name is Nurse Ames. I'm going to take your vital uh, real quick. If you can just hang on a second. Uh, 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 hurry up. I hate having my blood pressure taken. Eat it. Oh, damn. I know this is very uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> okay, put this right under your tongue real yeah. quick. Careful and slow. Thank you. Feel too bright. Hey, Dr. Hardy, you got a BP of 150 over 90, pulse of 110, respirations of about 20 to 22 and a temperature of 37.5. Okay, we should start the protocol. I think we should. So we're going to go over the assessment and come back and give you some medications to help yes, you. Yes, please, please. Okay. Oh God, you guys, just take okay. forever doing everything. Okay. Hurry up. <sighs>And we were also joined in the reenactment by uh, registered nurse uh, Chad Ortega, and he was Nurse Ames. And we were also joined by Jewel Adler. Uh, she's a psychiatrist, and she played the part of Dr. Harding. And I was Nancy Drew. So let's take a look at the first section of the CWA assessment. It is on nausea and vomiting. So take out your scale, and I want you to score um, as we go through each section. So the first section was nausea and vomiting. How you would start the assessment is you would ask the patient, have you been feeling sick to your stomach? Have you had any vomiting? So in the reenactment, I definitely talked about that I had nausea pretty much all the time or a lot of the time, and I did have the dry heaves, but I was not vomiting during the assessment and I didn't refer to any previous vomiting. So uh, please complete your assessment of Nancy Drew. What score would you pick for her? Um, okay, so I would assess her as a five out of seven. She did not have vomiting, um, but the other symptoms were, were pretty significant. The next section on the scale is sweating. Sorry, 
is tremors. The next section on the scale is tremors. And you would ask the patient to put out their hands and you observe to see if there's any shaking. So I had a tremor. Sometimes you can't see the tremor and you actually have to hold on to the hand. So take a minute and uh, complete your assessment on Nancy Drew and what score would you give her? Okay, I would give her a score of five uh, because there was a visible tremor. Now do be aware that some patients can fake a tremor. You can also ask them to stick out their tongue and observe their tongue, that's harder to fake. And the other thing you can do is ask them to watch your finger and move it side to side. If they have tremors, their eyeballs will um, vibrate. The next section is sweating. Um, you may have been able to see that my palms were very moist and I actually had beads of sweat on my face. So take a minute and finish your assessment of Nancy Drew. What score would you give her? Okay, I would give her five uh, because of the beads of sweat, but I was not drenched. Uh, you can see some patients, they're just, their whole clothing has to be changed uh, fairly frequently. The next section is anxiety, and um, you can ask the patient, do you feel nervous? Are you worried about things? Uh, so I said that I was anxious. Uh, sometimes a patient will say that they're anxious, but they don't look anxious. You still give them a score for saying that they're anxious because um, lower levels of anxiety are felt internally. Um, so take a minute and assess Nancy Drew. What score would you give her? Um, I rated her as a six. She was pretty anxious. She could hardly sit still, and she certainly talked about uh, anxiety uh, throughout the interview. And now we'll move on to the next section, and that is agitation. Uh, I showed signs of agitation when I was um, uh, criticizing the staff or asking them to hurry up through my tone of voice. There is a difference between anxiety and agitation. Anxiety is more worried, um, sense of doom, anxiety, butterflies in the stomach. Agitation is more outward and it's more aggressive and it's more related to anger. So they are two different things and patients can have both or one or the other or neither. So I was definitely agitated. Take, take a moment and uh, rate Nancy Drew. Tell me what score you would give her. I gave her a six. She was agitated most of the time and over little things and she, her anger flared up fairly quickly. The next section we're moving to is tactile disturbance. Uh, you would ask the patient, do you have any pins and needles? Do you have any burning? Do you have any itching? Uh, throughout the uh, interview uh, with Dr. Harding, I was scratching a lot. You would have noticed that. And uh, I didn't have any burning or itching. So take a moment and complete your assessment of Nancy Drew and tell me what score you'd give her. Okay, I gave her a score of a three uh, because she wasn't um, having full-blown tactile hallucinations. Some patients do have full-blown um, tactile hallucinations and they feel like there are ants crawling underneath their skin. And in fact, they might even be trying to rip off some of their skin uh, or they'll have intense burning or intense uh, pins and needles. Our next section is auditory disturbance. You would ask the patient, are the sounds harsh? Are you hearing anything that's disturbing to you? I definitely uh, was sort of wincing when people were talking and I asked them to lower their voice. So you take a minute and you complete your assessment and let me know what score you would give Nancy.
Okay. I gave her a score of three because the sounds were harsh, but I didn't have a full-blown auditory hallucination uh, where people were yelling at me or there were voices uh, that I was hearing. The next section we're going to go on to is visual disturbance. You would ask the patient, does the light appear to be too bright? Are you seeing anything that is disturbing you? So again, you know, I was wincing with the bright lights and I asked them to turn down the lights. They were still a little bit too bright, but they were okay. Take a minute and complete your assessment. What score would you give this patient? Okay, I would give her a score of three, moderate. Um, I wasn't having any uh, visual hallucinations. Um, people who are in the full DTs, they will have a number of different kinds of hallucinations. And visual hallucinations, they can see uh, bugs on the wall or little soldiers talking to them. Um, so for me, I was just um, wincing with the bright light and finding it too bright. The next section would be headache. You would ask, do you have a headache? How would you rate your headache on a pain scale? Um, be careful not to rate for dizziness. Uh, so I did refer to having a headache. Uh, I believe either Dr. Harding or Nurse Ames asked me how would I would rate it, and I said seven. So take a look at your scale and complete your assessment of the patient and tell me what score you would give for a pain scale of seven. Okay, I rated a five. I did describe having a pain scale of seven and I also had a band-like uh, sort of a tension headache. Um, so that would be a score of five. The next section is orientation. Was I oriented or was I not oriented throughout the interview? Take a minute and finish your assessment and select the score. Okay, I think I was oriented, so I got a score of zero. One thing we didn't do was ask um, Nancy Drew to do serial additions. You start with an easy number, like three, and you start the patient, you go, what's one plus three? It's four. Okay, what's four plus three? And then you let them go. Uh, sometimes people have early signs of disorientation. They might know where they are and who they are. They might know the day of the week, but they can't do the serial additions. Um, so ask that as well, in addition to the usual orientation questions. And if they can't do the serial additions, then they would score uh, a one. Okay, so add up all your points and tell me what you have. I have 41. Some of the scale is a little bit subjective, so if you're off two or three points, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you're off four points or more, go back over the material and figure out where you sc scored a little higher or a little lower and see if you can refine this. Uh, the other thing that you would do is check the patient's vital signs. This is very important. Some patients have changes in vital signs before they actually have the withdrawal symptoms that you can observe. Uh, some don't. Uh, Nurse Ames took my blood pressure and uh, my pulse, and I had a high blood pressure and a high pulse, and this was related to my withdrawal. So you'd want to include that in your assessment. Um, now, parts of what you also need to know, along with the CWA, would be a sedation scale, because you'll be giving medications that cause sedation, and you don't want to over-sedate the patient. You want to give them adequate treatment for the symptoms of withdrawal but not uh, put them into a coma, right? So uh, there is usually um, a RAS or another type of sedation scale that's used as part of the assessment. Then these uh, assessments um, are looked at as a whole and there's usually an, or an MD order set to treat the patient based on their score. In an area like psychiatry, where patients are pretty medically stable, we tend to use things like um, Valium or Librium. They have a long half-life, and so they provide a lot of coverage for withdrawal. 
However, in med surge areas, patients are there because they have a medical illness and they're not that stable. So generally the orders will be something that is short acting like Ativan. And this is ideal for somebody who has medical issues. And then you, you can do the assessment more often and treat the symptoms quickly uh, without adding some kind of medical compromise to their um, medical issues as well. Another thing to remember is that the CUI assessment um, is a tool, it's not a diagnosis. Sometimes there are other factors that influence the score. A patient could have an anxiety disorder, or a patient could be schizophrenic and hallucinating. When that's the case, you have to include all of that information um, in your assessment, in your initial assessments, and then you also want to work as a team to see how you can modify the scale for this particular patient. Uh, again, you don't want to be over-prescribing a benzodiazepine um, if they're having auditory hallucinations because they're schizophrenic. They're going to need antipsychotic medications and not as much as the uh, benzodiazepines. I want to thank you for watching this reenactment and going through the CWA scale. I hope it was helpful. I know that it is a tool that's used nationwide. It's recognized by the insurance companies. It's used a lot in substance abuse programs. Um, it has a lot of clinical research behind it. It is an effective tool. Uh, the earlier you treat somebody in alcohol withdrawal, uh, the more likely they uh, will avoid all the complications. And also in the future, they'll be more likely to seek treatment. If you have any questions about this tool or how to work with patients um, in alcohol withdrawal, please ask your clinical nurse manager or your nurse educator. And if I work at your facility, by all means, you can ask me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jewel Adler and a physician at CPMC and a member of the CWA Protocol Task Force. Part of the CWA protocol is ensuring that alcohol withdrawal patients are not over-sedated. And for this, we're using the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. The procedure is fairly simple. First, you observe the patient and see if they're awake. If they are, go no further. If they're not alert, then use auditory stimuli. You call the patient's name and ask them to look at you. For example, Mrs. Smith, wake up, look at me in the eyes. And make note, do they look at you in the eyes? Is it more or less than 10 seconds? Or is there any physical movement at all? If there's no physical movement, then you move to physical stimuli. And you can either shake the shoulder or do a sternal rub. I would recommend starting with the shaking the shoulder. Scoring is fairly simple. If they were awake to begin with, the score is zero. If you had to use auditory stimuli and they look at you in the eyes for more than 10 seconds, the score is a negative one. If they look at you in the eyes for less than 10 seconds, the score is a negative 2. If they really don't look at you in the eyes, but there is physical movement, the score is a negative 3. If you have to use physical stimuli and there's any response, the score is a negative 4. If there's physical stimuli and there's no response at all, the score is a negative 5. If you have any questions, please talk to your nursing supervisor or nurse educator. Thank you very much.